What's up, Dark Delicious? My name is Lydia. Yeah, I'm Kenny G. And today we're going to be talking about... A Gretzko! A Gretzko! A Gretzko! However you pronounce it. Season 2. Yes, yeah, so this is going to be a spoiler heavy this spoiler alert. This is a alert. spoiler cast. Spoiler alert. So we're just going to talk <laughs> about... Um, this is going to be our spoiler filled review yes. of A Gretzko uh, season, season 2. two. So we didn't do one on season one, but uh, we liked it, it so much. It was a great that show. That we watched season we two. We absolutely loved it. Yeah. And we were counting the days until season two came out. And unfortunately, we were slow to get around to reviewing it. Yeah. You know, here we are today. Yay. But uh, who cares, really, right? Yeah. It, it so was it was great. If you don't know who this character is, so essentially yeah. it's like a, from the studio that did Hello Kitty. Yes. Um, so it's in Sar that. Is it Sar Sar Sarnio. Sarnio. Yeah. Okay. Or Sarino, I think. Um, but essentially, it's it's of the cutesy kawaii kind of drawing style. Yeah. Um, I'll throw up some images on. Yeah. The screen. But uh, essentially, uh, it's a little bit more mature. It's it deals with a lot more real to life situations, right? Yes. Like Hello Kitty is more meant for children. Uh, Grutsuko is meant for like uh, growing adults. Anyway. It's it, essentially it tells the story of a 25 year old woman. Red panda. Uh, red panda red the the theme of the show is they're all animals right? yeah but i mean it, really it tells the story of a 25 year old woman and what what they actually sort of go through um in the work living course. in the work living in tokyo specifically but also in japan and uh we know this because people who lived have lived in japan have told us and confirmed it basically but i mean uh essentially yeah it covers like their workplace type experiences their you know living at home and uh societal expectations on women specifically uh at the age of 25 in japan which is completely different than that here in north america and probably goes over the heads of some people that they don't get the whole, you know, this is really how it is in Japan. Yeah, so like, uh, I think she has her own apartment, right? She does, she has yeah. her own apartment. Okay, so essentially, the expectation for women in, in Japanese working culture is that like, once you get married, you don't have to work anymore. Like, that's your ticket out of, out of there, right? So like, in the first season, she was like, she was really hating her job, and then she's like, oh, maybe I can like marry someone and then I and won't have out. to work, right? So like... Um, but by the end of the season, her friends... Yes. Uh, what were their names? I forget what they're... they're the, the, the two ladies. Uh, Gori, Gori and, and Washimi. Washimi. They talk her out of that whole way of thinking by yeah. the end of the season. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that was her thinking approaching the end of the season. Yeah. Right? I mean, obviously in North America, totally different our value system is completely system. different yeah but in japan this is a real thing where they have to deal with the this expectation that you should be married by 25 and then you resign and become like a, a stay-at-home mom stay-at-home mom yeah yeah and that the male provides for you right essentially, exactly. Right? exactly that that's a real thing in japan and that yeah. the that's a real societal pressure on women living in Japan. Yes. So, uh, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Uh, so essentially, that, that first season kind of dealt more with kind of her coming into her own a little bit and her dealing with her anger issues because she has a lot of like stress, right? Like, uh, like, work. For, like a lot of work stress and like, and especially like in, in Japanese work culture, there's different expectations you have to get your your boss tea and you have to like pour beer a certain way with the label up like like things that we wouldn't even like Lots think of about weird here things you wouldn't care about yeah so so anyways so all this stress was getting to her so then what she would do is at nighttime she would go to her local karaoke bar bring her own microphone and just kind of like rock out her anger like ah, shitty boss <laughs> right like it was, it's just like really funny and then like but of course she's like this like you know, she's like, like polite, this cute, cutesy panda, cute, super innocent looking red panda. Yeah. That uh, you can't help but be like, oh, my mm -hmm. God, she's so cute. Yeah. She's so lovable. Yeah. And the English cast is fantastic. Yeah. And the girl who does or the lady who does uh, Ritsuko's voice 
fantastic. Yeah, so like it's a very like relatable story. It's a great series. It's a great. The first season is fantastic. Yeah. Now to get into season two. Yeah. I was super excited for it. I would, if you were to rate it out of five, I would give it four. I think. You think the first season was better? I think the first season was a little better. Um, it's also, this wasn't bad, though. It just, um, obviously, we're going to spoil it for you. It ends slightly sadly, but, I mean, that's fine. So, essentially, what happens is a Gritsko, or sorry, Ritsko's mom is like, how come you're not getting married yet? When she you- shows up and sort of moves into her apartment. Yeah, yeah. Not like, but just more like intruding she's intruding she's intruding into her personal space a lot yeah which is annoying but maybe that's something that japanese really have to deal with though i don't know i don't know i'm not japanese so essentially the mom is like presenting her with these like you know like portfolios portfolios of men it's just like okay i'm setting you up on a date with this guy do like arranged marriage yeah right so um so she goes on a date with a polar bear and uh he seems really nice but then uh, she was like, well, I'm not really feeling this whole arranged marriage thing, so I'm not going to go through with it. Uh, so then by the time she kind of warms up to, oh, he seemed like a nice guy. He's moved on to somebody else. So uh, anyway, so then she's... There are sort of three arcs. Yeah. There are three arcs. Like the first arc was the Anai. Or Anai. Is it Anai? Anai is the new hire that comes in. The new in. hire, the new guy that comes in. And that's sort of the first arc. And then that arc blends into the... Mom trying to do arranged marriages arc, which then blends into the Tadano arc, right? Yes, those are the three arcs. Yeah, Tadano being a love interest, Anai being the new co worker who's a source of stress, who's a a major source of stress, who, who has like this one of the things that I sort of didn't like, which was his personality switched on a dime. Well, you, you made a very good comparison to actually like real life. Like Kenny was saying that, you know, Anai is more similar to uh, Snowflake culture. Well, I don't even really like saying Snowflake, but I mean, that is what the common term used is Mm -hmm. uh, in in media, right? Essentially, the the softies, right? Yeah. And so when uh, approached with conflict in the workplace, Anai would send, would, would not do anything to her face. Yeah. But the second he was away from Ritzko, who was his supervisor essentially, he would like barrage her phone with text messages saying that he felt offended, you did this and you made me feel uncomfortable in the workplace and I would like an explanation in writing in, in writing by this time. And she would try to like reason with him and he would just get more irritated and send her more angry text messages. Yeah, yeah. It could be also like a introvert, extrovert kind of thing, whereas introverts Oh, he's definitely introvert. Yeah. But she's sort of introverted too. Yeah, like not as badly as he is though. Right. Right. So like she can at least like function function like yeah like a functioning introvert whereas he was just like more like on a different spectrum all so his his character arc kind of is like this arc of like he's like crazy nobody likes him even the boss director ton doesn't like him uh because he's Haida, like reporting everyone that's the thing he's just like this is highly inappropriate i'm reporting you to blah blah blah, blah. yeah right even so, the yeah he even like threatened the boss with yeah. text messages saying he's gonna report it to his boss yeah yeah uh um, but anyways, the, the kind of the first arc comes to a culmination with uh, they have to do this food. Uh, what is it? Food stall for a family Food stall festival. for a family appreciation day where everyone brings their families. Mm-hmm. And uh, there, uh, Ritzko has to make food for for her stall because along with Anai. Because it's hard to well, because um, it's hard to control Anai or ask Anai to do things because so she does it all herself. So, so yeah, so it, it's kind of annoying, right? Because she doesn't want to set him off because he's already very like very. He's like he's like on a a hair trigger. Yeah, that's, that's right. I think yeah. that's the phrase. Yes. But yeah, uh, essentially, yeah, uh, the end of his arc is uh, they get to this food festival, right? Or yeah. family festival. And uh, Ritzko's cooking is not very Ritzko's good. Ritzko's cooking is not very good. 
Uh, but the hippo character, Kabe, mm. uh, she has a way of communicating with Anai that is very, um, uh, like dealing with, uh, like a child almost, right? Well, not, not, not like in an insulting way, but mm -hmm. like positive reinforcement. Yeah. Right? That's what I mean. That's what I mean. I, I don't mean it to come off rude. Uh, essentially, she gives him positive reinforcement, which makes him feel empowered within the team. Yeah. And then, uh... Uh, he becomes the cook for the stall, makes amazing food, the whole thing's a success. And after that, he essentially just becomes a normal member of the cast. He's yeah. no longer like uh, crazy yeah. texting people. He just becomes like a chill. Yeah. Oh, he's, he seems okay. Yeah, for the rest yeah. of the series, he seems okay. Yeah, and, like he, and because he's such a good cook, he's selling bentos to people and everyone's liking him. So it's like, so like that, that story arc is complete. So yes. then uh, on to the mom dating thing. She, so like Ritsuko's like, I don't have time to be dating. And the mom's like, what are you doing? And she's like, well, I'm going for driving lessons. Cause she saw something. She, like, she BSed, right? Yeah, she BS that like, cause she saw that she saw like a, an ad in like the Was subway, the subway or something. Yeah. And yeah. she's like, oh, I'm going for driving lessons. The mom's like, oh, perfect. So like, I'll pay for you, right? So she's like, oh shit, I gotta actually go oh, through perfect. this. Oh, perfect. That way you could drive your father to, uh, to yeah, doctor's appointments. appointments yes. or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but this arc deals with her, uh, she meets Tadano, which uh, is a character who comes into play later in the series, but... Uh, he's a donkey? I he's think? a donkey, yeah. Yeah. He's like a blue donkey yeah. or something. Um, so he comes off as like this like loafer type guy who's just he's, like... He's like a total bum, basically. Yeah. He loafs around in his hoodie and track pants and uh, keeps failing driving lessons. Yes. That's where she meets him, is at the driving school. That's right, yeah. Um, then uh, the mother keeps trying to set her up with other people. She, she uh, keeps fantasizing about this guy that she met at the driver's school, and then he just suddenly stops showing up. He and stops showing up, she passes her driving school, Yeah. and then... Um, goes on a road trip. Goes on a road trip with her friends, and this is where a big... Spoilers revealed that Washimi used to be married and downplays marriage and basically says, you know, don't get so excited about marriage because her and the other girl, what's her name? Uh, Gori. 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 So, so, and then Washimi's like, oh, marriage is not, ma you're not made for marriage. And she's like, excuse me, like, you're not one to talk. And then, like, so then they start this, like, epic fight. Yeah. And then and that they don't talk to each other. And it sort of runs throughout the rest of the season it's until really the awkward. last episode. Yeah, last episode they come together because they um, make up. It turns out that the donkey is actually this uh, tech mogul, and uh, Rutsko, uh, Rutsko, uh is walking down the street, and he's driving in his limo, and he's just like, "Oh, I'll just go like meet her," and then they went out for like they go out on dates, and yeah, uh, she falls in love with him. Yeah, it's very they, cute. They have there's like a whole episode where they're you know they have like the perfect relationship. Yeah, but then you're like, you get this feeling in the pit of your stomach like something is just it's, it's going too, too well. perfect. Yeah. It's going too good, and something bad's gonna happen. And eventually, it's revealed that. He doesn't believe... Oh, wait, we need to back up a sec. Oh, okay. At the uh, the food thing, the family appreciation, uh, Ritsuko sees uh, the hippo's family, and she is inspired by that to want to start her own family. Because mm -hmm. the... What's the hippo's name? I keep forgetting. Uh, Kabe, Kabe. Right? And Kabe has three kids, I believe, or two, and a husband. Yeah. And they're all there together and they're having a great time, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and Ritsuko sees that and is like, that's what I want. Right? Yeah. So then come this other arc with Tadano, uh, everything is going great. They start dating. And then he... He's like, like, she has to like stop going to work because like all the social media is blowing up. And yes, because like, he's famous. Yeah, he's rich and famous. He's rich and famous. And social media is blowing up and they're giving her all these like negative messages on her Instagram and whatnot. Uh, it, very much like real life, calling her a uh, gold digger mm -hmm. and all these terrible things. She's just an office worker, like, uh, she sucks, right? He, he can do better than you and all this other stuff, right? Yeah. But then there's this one comment like, oh, I can't wait for them to get married. 
And then she's like, oh my god, that's so sweet. And then he's like, oh, this is a stupid comment. I mean, marriage sucks anyway. And she's like, uh, Yeah, and this like breaks her, right? Yeah. This breaks her because she wants a family, right? She wants, not like immediately, but she, she wants, wants the prospects a of a marriage eventually and kids eventually. Yeah, right? and he's like, and well, he, I love you forever. Doesn't that count? He he and, shoots them both down. Yeah. He shoots down marriage yeah. and he shoots down kids. Yeah. And uh, they have drastically different perspectives on these subjects and it causes them to split up. Yeah, which is really sad because they were such a cute couple and they got along so well. They did get along really good and uh she loved him a lot mm -hmm. and there was a lot of cute scenes where she's mm -hmm. like floating in the air she's yeah, so happy her eyes are sparkling it's like really cute it's like being in love right very very sweet mm -hmm. but then in the end he crushes her heart basically and then right? she crushes him at karaoke yes yeah yes but it was nice she um, got all the friends together because she's like i need your help and like she kidnapped the guy yeah. And like brought him to the karaoke bar and then she's just like, here's what I've really been feeling. <laughs> right? And she does her karaoke thing, yeah. Yeah. Where yeah. she screams in the mic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But good. It was good. It was still good. It, it was, was sad. Good. It was I, good. I, I, like I said, I would rank it like a four out of five of uh, the season just because a few things were predictable, like Tadano not working out. I think I didn't want I it think to be predictable. She's destined for Haida. Yeah, the I think so guy. Too. I hope so. Uh, I was rooting for you, bud. I was rooting yeah. for you. But uh, they're probably. It almost felt like. Um, okay, well, let's get more serious here for a moment. Good storytelling, right? A good story to be told always goes over an arc, right? And an arc starts with a character in one place, and by the end, something about the character has changed. Okay. Something that they've experienced in this story has changed who they are as a person, right? If if that doesn't occur, there's no story to be told, right? Because that is that is the the journey, is that whole, you know, story, right? Yeah. And how something they experienced changed their lives, right? Right. Whereas like here, she sort of just ended up in the same position as she was at the end of the first season. Yes. Which is to say that nothing really changed. It's like if you look at the um, Star Wars uh, Last Jedi, right? If you take where the characters end were at the end of the previous movie, um, Force Awakens, and where the characters are at the end of Last Jedi, they're essentially in the same spot. Nothing's changed, right? And yeah. and it leaves a, a bad taste in your mouth because it's a bad bad storytelling, right? Well, I mean, you gotta think of it this way. They're probably milking this for well, as long as Well, that's what I mean. Can. That's what I mean is that uh, rather than get to it, which would be the whole hooking up with Haida, right? Uh, they're going to drag it out over at least three seasons. And I mean, if it takes them another year to produce another season, we're looking at June 2020 for another season, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And if let's just say this goes on for three to five seasons, uh, you're probably not going to get them establishing a relationship until the final episode. Of course, of course. Right? I yeah. mean, in my opinion, it would be more interesting to deep dive into how things are after the relationship is established. But in typical Japanese That's anime, they, they never don't. ever they go don't. there. It's like soon as a relationship is established, like they'll hold hands, they'll be like, Walking oh. off into the sunset. Yeah, it'll be like, end of the series. It's true. It's true. So, nope. uh, imagine the rest yourself. Pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. In a lot of Japanese anime, nobody goes past that. Right. Because yeah. a kiss is like the limit. Uh, it's because I don't know. Life goes on after you find your your life partner. Significant other, yeah. In fact, more things happen that is interesting. Many and challenges and stuff like that. that. Would, um, 
definitely be interesting. Like life is a smooth sailing till you're dead. Yeah, like it's not like okay, I met my significant Whoa, other. That's it. Life is life is set. I'm set. Yeah, exactly. It's exactly. like no, get ready for the next roller coaster. Pretty much. You just got off one, and now you're on this one. Exactly right. Yeah. Um, um, I did enjoy season two though. Like I, I enjoyed. It, it. I enjoyed the roller coaster ride of season two. I just felt very. Happy I love Retsko. I think she is the most lovable character. She's so sweet. She's so cute. Right? And her rage fits. You're like, yeah, I I, I understand. I feel you. Totally I feel, feel you. you. I've yeah. been there. Um, the new character, Anai, he was okay. He was okay. I think he... We've all had that scary coworker. I think. We've all yeah. had that experience. So it's like, it felt very like, <gasps> you know, when she's getting those text messages like, oh yeah. God. Yeah. So it was good. It was good. I liked it all. Uh, Tadano, what did you think of him? He was cute. He was cute. He was okay? He was sweet, but I mean, like, there's, there's a lot of, they're making a lot of parallels to, like, our culture right now. Because there is a lot of people who don't believe in marriage, and rightfully so, because, I mean, like, the, the, you know, um, divorce rate was, like, at 50% at one point. But at the same time, I just shared an article not like two weeks ago on Facebook <laughs> where it's like, millennials are killing divorce, right? It's they're ruining the divorce ruining industry. They're ruining the divorce industry, right? Because <laughs> a lot of people yeah. make money off the divorce. You know, divorce lawyers, courts, uh, yeah. you know, uh, trustees, settlements, like all that stuff, right? That's all money. Sketchy people who use it to get money. That too, gold digging people. Yeah, like yeah. exactly right. So, um... I, if anything, like, I, I think she's, I don't know if she's a millennial or if she's, like, a generation, like, above us or whatever. No, she's but, 25. So she's younger than us, even. So she could be even Gen Z or X. Like, still a millennial, I think. Kind of millennial-ish. Anyways, but, like, I think the reason why divorce rates are lower is there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of social stuff going on. I mean, like, people can't afford to live by themselves anymore. Well, that, yeah. There's, um, and people who do get married... It's not like a quick, like, let's go to Vegas and stuff. It's a very well thought out process because divorce is very costly. So, you know, <laughs> like marriage yes, is costly, divorce is costly. So it's just, uh, I mean, that, that could be why millennials are killing the divorce industry, right? And then a lot of people are not people getting married. I think people are also, the people who do get married, get married later. Yeah. And they're in the relationship longer. Right, exactly. And, then and the those are things that lead to a more stable relationship. Yeah. Is not rushing to marriage. And, and then, um, you know, a not, no, it wasn't a nine, sorry. Uh, ta, 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 Tadano. Tadano. Um, it made sense why he didn't want marriage. He's like, you know, I'm an upcoming tech guy. Like, I don't want to be tied down by anything. Like, I love you. Like, let's go on fun adventures together, but I don't want to get married. Because that was, yeah. he, he wasn't in that part of his life yet, right? So... They were just in very different stages, and that's kind of why the relationship ended. But they're still friends. But it's just like, it's very heartbreaking. It's kind of like Monica and Tom Selleck on Friends. You're like, this, they're the perfect couple! And then because she wanted kids, he didn't. They had to break up. Yes. And it turned out for the best because she ended up seeing uh, the guy. Chandler. Chandler, and then they have a family of their own. So, like, you know, it sucks, but... It, it can be done. So, I mean, like, I, I'm really, really rooting for Haida. Um, yeah, in the next season. We'll see. We shall see. Oh, man, it got darker in here. Nanny! Just as the sun was setting. The sun set, and our room is much darker <laughs> than it was when we started. Oh. Uh, Anyways, but if you watched uh, A Groot's Go Season 2 or Season 1, let us know in the comments below what you thought. Were you happy? Were you sad? Were you feeling heartbreak? Were you feeling excitement? Let yeah. us know. Yeah. Um, I enjoyed it. Me too. Definitely. Leave, leave a rating out of five okay. in the comments. Perfect. All right. If you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button. Give us a couple of likes and a share. Likes are very important for our channel because we're a tiny channel and we need exposure, please. Yes. So uh, if you want to follow us on Twitch, we stream weekly. Our handle is super underscore dorkalicious. And you can follow us on Twitter. Our handle there is you are dorkalicious. Uh, so, this has been Lydia. Yeah, and I'm Kenny G. And it's been fun darkening out with you. Bye! Bye!
Hey guys, this is Lydia. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button. Give us a couple likes and a share. The likes are super important because every time you like, it gives our uh, channel a bit more exposure. So please like. If you don't want to follow, at least like. Please, please, please. Also, um, if you want to chat, please leave a comment uh, down below. Also, if you want to chat more frequently, we are on Twitch. Uh, the channel is called Super underscore Dorkalicious, and we stream pretty much daily. And uh, we'll stream like video games, karaoke, fun stuff. So just uh, pop on over to Twitch, Super underscore Dorkalicious, and definitely engage with us. So, um, but for now, please like and share and subscribe. And uh, we'll see you next time.